before this video starts, leave down below uh, in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. It doesn't have to be on the Miami Heat. It could be on uh, different teams, different players. But if you want to see more uh, NBA discussion videos like this, let me know in the comments and leave a like and enjoy. Jimmy Butler needs some damn help. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to a different type of video where I'm going to rant about my favorite team, the Miami Heat, and the fact that this man, Jimmy Butler, needs help badly really badly and i jotted down uh, a few notes here about the game against the magic that i watched and yeah yeah man it was a bad one now in that game this saturday night the miami heat faced off against the orlando magic the 13 seeded orlando magic he only had 27 games going into this the my uh, 27 wins i'm sorry going into this game and the miami heat looking to gain ground on the knicks and nets who both just lost and they could have been within a game of them for the 6th and 5th seed if they won this game. They were sitting at 36 and 32. And my God, did everyone not name Jimmy Butler blow it. Now, the Heat lost in overtime 114 to 126 after a crazy Jimmy Butler 3 to send it to overtime. And this man, Jimmy Butler, did everything he could. He had 38 points um, on, what, 56% shooting. He did shoot two for seven from three. He shot a lot of threes, but one of those threes was the game tying three. Eight for eight from the line. He had five rebounds, two assists, a steal, and only two turnovers. And he was still a negative on um, plus minus, but that is obviously not his fault. Now, the first thing I'm going to go over here is uh, his co-stars, his help. Uh, he Jimmy Butler did not have a single teammate above 14 points. His second leading scorer was Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero both had 14 points apiece. Tyler Hero did not play the fourth quarter or overtime, supposedly due to food poisoning. I don't know how the man gets food poisoning midway through the third quarter or even gets it at the start of the fourth quarter. I don't know how that happens. I think that's bogus. But Bam Adebayo, this is probably his worst game of the season. He shot 7 for 17 from the floor, and he played 42 minutes. This man could not hit a shot for the life of him. The shots he has been hitting all season, these easy layups, these easy floaters, these easy jump shots, he could not hit any of them. Uh, he did not go to the line at all, and he only had seven rebounds. For your starting center to only have seven rebounds, and that was the high of the game, you you cannot win. The Miami Heat got out-rebounded by like 20, and Eric Spolstra in the fourth quarter and in overtime, the tallest player on the court was Bam Adebayo. We ran our small lineup, so it it made no sense whatsoever. The lineup on the court to end the game was Gabe Vincent, Kyle Lowry, um, Max Struess, Jimmy Bam. The tallest player in that lineup is 6'9", Bam Adebayo, and then Jimmy Butler at 6'7". While they had Wendell Carter on the court and Paolo Bancaro, obviously you're going to get out-rebounded. You have no rebounder. Bam's not a really a rebounder. This man averages like 10 rebounds, 9 rebounds. He, you need Kevin Love or Omer Yurtsevin on the court to end that game. There's no reason for Max Drews to be out there. Actually, the, I'd say Max Drews played good this game, but there's no reason for Gabe Vincent to be out there with Lowry. That backcourt is too small and not good enough defensively because Jalen Suggs had, I think, four threes in the fourth and overtime. That basically sealed the game. Four or five threes. I can double check right now. Yeah, he had four threes all coming in the um, fourth quarter and overtime. Uh, just... Absolutely awful coaching down the stretch from Eric Spolstra. And that gets me to my next point. Also, Bam, another issue. Bam had four turnovers this game. This man had butterfingers. Butterfingers. He could not hold on to the ball. He could not pass the ball. He could not catch the ball. He every, Whenever the ball was in his hands, he lost it. He just lost the ball. It was absolutely gut-wrenching. Same thing with Victor Oladipo. Same thing with Gabe Vincent. Uh, Lowry had three turnovers, but he was handling the ball a lot. So that's actually not awful. Same thing with Tyler Hero. He had three turnovers, but it's just completely unacceptable. And that gets me to our next point of Victor Oladipo. Boy, has he been struggling. As the sixth man, he went three for 13 from the field and one for eight from three. He he just doesn't pass sometimes. He thinks he's back in, in his prime form and he just wants to take every shot no matter how many times he misses. 23% from the field and 12% from three is not good enough and i'm glad the one thing spo did good down the stretch is he benched oladipo usually oladipo closes games clearly was not good enough to close this game i'm glad they benched him he did have two steals and a block but nine points he actually was a positive plus minus surprisingly but 
Oladipo struggling as our sixth man and sometimes as our like third or fourth leading scorer, uh, third or fourth best scorer on the team, just could not do anything. He's he's good for like one or two 20 point games a month, but I don't see the Miami Heat bringing him back to be honest. There, there's no reason why they should. He's on a one year deal and he has not shown much uh, to be a good backup player or even starter. And I already slightly mentioned it, but Tyler Hero not playing the fourth quarter or overtime, saying it was food poisoning, I think that's bullcrap. He was having a really good game. He only played 26 minutes in this game, 46% from the field on 6 for 13 shooting. He was struggling from downtown, 2 for 6, but he had 14 points. He had 5 rebounds, 3 assists. I mean, he was our second best player in this game. I mean, I'd say third behind Lowry. But he was hitting shots down the stretch to get us back into this game. So there was no reason why he should have not been in the game. But like I said, they claimed food poisoning. So I guess that's their excuse. And with Tyler Hero not playing, that gets me to my next point. The Miami Heat are went 11 for 37 from three. Now, if you watch the Heat at all this season, my God, can they not shoot threes? It is absolutely disgusting how bad they are from downtown they are currently the worst percentage team from downtown shooting 33 percent all right compared to last year where they shot 38 percent and were first in the league but the heat as i recall i've watched every single game this season the miami heat i think i've had like three good shooting games i can recall two of them coming in this past month so that just shows you the the regression from three and we have a 90 million dollar man in duncan robinson just sitting on the bench not getting P um, playing time. Getting none of it. Max Drews has been not good this year. He has been very streaky. He had eight points on two for four from three this game. He's been all right. Lowry's been, uh, Lowry and Tyler Hero have been probably our two best three-point shooters. Uh, we brought in Kevin Love to help stretch the floor. He only took one shot this game and he missed it. It was a three-pointer. He missed the shot. He has been struggling to start with the um, team. Gabe Vincent was supposed to be a breath of fresh air from downtown. He went one for four. Old Debo went one for eight, obviously. Zeller attempted a three for some reason. Uh, Yurtsvin only played seven minutes. And yeah, so really, Struess, uh, Hero, and Jimmy Butler hit two threes, which was the second most on the team. It can't happen. 29% from three, you cannot win games shooting that poorly from downtown. And the best part is, no matter how bad the Heat are shooting, they still take threes. Bad ones too. They will still keep shooting. They could miss 10 in a row and they will still die by the three. No adjustments will be made to get into the post or drive to the paint or do anything. No, they just keep shooting threes. It makes no sense that something has to switch up. You can't keep shooting threes if you're ice cold. And then that coincides with 44% from the field. The Miami Heat have the worst offense in the league. Points per game, rating, percentage, three-point percentage, the all at league lows this year. They're averaging 108 points a game, worst in the league. They're averaging 45% from the field, worst in the league. I already mentioned the 33% from three. And they have like a 107, I believe, offensive rating. All 30th in the league. They shot 45% in this game, probably due to Bam struggling. Uh, I uh, heavily on old Depot going three for 13, to be brutally honest with you, because you would take those away, and that's probably to a 46, 47%. But the Miami Heat just couldn't hit shots this game. And I need to give credit where it's due to the Orlando Magic. They couldn't miss. All, of, I want to say, three and a half quarters, the Orlando Magic could not miss a shot anywhere on the court. 48%. Um, in this game for them, they shot 35% from three, which is pretty good, mainly due to Jalen Suggs, but literally couldn't miss. Wendell Carter just babied Bam out of bio all game. Actually, you know, it wasn't even, he didn't play on Bam out You know what happens? The Miami Heat played this defense where when we're down, whoever's bringing up the ball, we bring Bam up out of the paint on the center and swarm him with Bam and whoever's playing point guard, mainly Gabe Vincent. We swarm the person bringing up the ball, and that leaves. Uh, we run a zone, so that leaves Max Struess, who is usually on the corner playing that zone defense, to have to come help on the center, who is now wide open in the paint. Have to come help on that center. Then here comes, let's say, Tyler Hero, and then Bam has to run back to the paint to help. And by that point, 
the center already has an easy bucket and sometimes an and one. So I don't know why Coach Spo is running this defense. I know the Miami Heat have one of the best defenses in the league, the top 10. I believe they're like number three in a defensive rating. But that type of defense is not going to work. Teams are now picking that apart. It worked earlier in the season. Now, these recent games I've watched, it's just not working. It's not working. Every time I see them do that, they the other team scores immediately. And that was the case here for Wendell Carter. He shot 12 for 17 from the field. Two for seven. So this man was perfect for two-pointers. Perfect. He had 27 points. He had 11 rebounds. And Franz Wagner, who left the game early, had four offensive rebounds. Four offensive rebounds. That was another thing. The Magic had 15 offensive rebounds to our five. And they had 54 rebounds to our 30. So clearly, the rebound battle is not working. Even with Franz uh, leaving the game with an injury, we still end up losing this game. Franz had 17. Paolo had 17. Uh, near triple-double. Uh, Wendell had 27. We Gary Harris had 11. Markel had 12. He barely... Actually, he didn't barely play, play 38 minutes. Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs combined for 32 points, 16 each off the bench. And that leads me to the next point. How bad the Miami Heat bench is. The Miami Heat bench went for a total of uh, 31 points. 31 bench points. That The entire Miami Heat bench didn't even outscore um, the two guards on the Orlando Magic bench. So you're you're telling me, also, once again, the worst bench the, um, scoring team in the league, worst bench, they couldn't outscore two bench players for the Magic. That is not enough. Our leading bench scorer was Kyle Lowry, who played starter minutes. He played 36 minutes. He had 12 points. That was our leader off the bench. Behind... Uh, Victor Oladipo, who had nine points, and then Max Schuess had eight. Our next one was Cody Zeller, who played three minutes. Yeah, that's not enough. We are not getting enough value out of our bench. And that is also solely to the fact that Tyler Hero is starting, and we don't longer have that main guy who we know can score off the bench. There's no one on this bench. We thought it'd be Oladipo. It's clearly not. There is no one on this Miami Heat bench that you can look at and be like, I can trust this guy to give me 15 a night. I can trust this guy to give me at least 12 there's no one it used to be max Struess. it used to be old depot now you look at it no one on this bench can give you at least 15 a night it's just not possible we went from the sixth man of the year giving us 20 off the bench to now the worst bench in the league and tyler hero i think he's shooting slightly better but he's putting up basically the same stats he did off the bench so i, I don't know what we can do there i don't think hero should be off the bench but this bench needs some real real help and now Lowry has been back. Uh, he missed the last 15 games. This game showed me, even though how bad he's been playing, Kyle Lowry needs to start. He needs to start because he is way more of a ball handler, way more of a facilitator than Gabe Vincent. Gabe Vincent is not a true point guard. He's more of a combo guard, and I think he'd be a lot better off the bench rather than starting. I don't know if the Eric Spolzer is going to do that because I know uh, at the trade deadline, they talked with Kyle Lowry, um, him, Pat Riley, and them on his role. Watching this game, seeing how good Kyle Lowry was in his return, I know he won't keep it up. He had two steals in this game. He had four assists. He was hitting big-time threes. He was our best three-point shooter in this game. He's good for shooting threes. You can count on that. He will have those games where he struggles. But Kyle Lowry, I think, still needs to start. He's still the best point guard on this team. I don't think Gabe Vincent is good enough to continue starting. He's been hitting a cold spot. I think Gabe Vincent off the bench would work great. So I believe Kyle Lowry needs to start because then that keeps the pressure off of Jimmy and Bam and Hero to have to bring up the ball every single time and have to facilitate. And also, we the Heat need to stop with this full court passing bull crap. Off the inbound, it's mainly Kevin Love with these full court passes that barely connect with the player always almost turn into a turnover. It just happens way too often and it doesn't work as high of a percentage that they want it to. So that's another thing that causes a lot of turnovers. I already mentioned uh, the Heat uh, have had turnover struggle, uh, turnover turnover struggles so far this um, in the past few weeks. They had 17 this game, but the Magic also had um, 18. So that wasn't too much. It was the turnovers down the stretch that really killed the Heat. They had in overtime, I want to say like four straight turnovers. Two of them were bam, that led to. Orlando Magic three pointers that ultimately ended up winning on the game. They went up by 11 after that. So that's a big thing. The Heat 
the Heat need to um more, uh, be disciplined with themselves when it comes to the turnovers. They had that struggle with the two games against Cleveland with the turnovers. They had like 20 turnovers in both those games. Somehow managed to win the second one. Uh, but yeah, turnovers are a big issue. My next point is going to be how five out of nine, the Magic played nine players. Five of them shot over 50%. So, Bull Bull shot 50%. Yeah, he only took two shots, but it is what it is. Uh, Jalen Suggs shot 50% off the bench. He was 5 for 10 from the field, 4 for 6 from 3. Uh, Cole Anthony shot 55%, 5 for 9. Um, and Wendell Carter, 70%. Franz Wagner, 70%. That That is hard. They shot 48% for the game. 48% for the game. I already mentioned it. There's not much you can do when a team is just hitting that many shots. Uh, the Heat's defense, like I said, has been struggling. But when a team hits that many shots, there's not much you can do. The fact that it was good enough to go to overtime, thank you, Jimmy Butler, out-rebounded by 24, and the team shot nearly 50% from the field, this should have been a blowout. It, it should have been a blowout, but it wasn't because of Jimmy Butler. And then that gets me to my last point. I don't understand it. Jimmy Butler did not even touch the ball in overtime. He, They were looking for no looks for him. I, I don't know. I shut I shut the game off at the end with like 25 seconds left. I know Jimmy Butler ended up leaving the game uh, with like, I want to say 10 seconds left or stuff like that. And they got a tech, uh, which all Jimmy deserved to leave. Um, Jimmy Butler did not touch. The guy who just sent you to overtime, the guy who just went on a 12-0 run by himself, does not get a shot in overtime. What is that thinking? Why are we... Why is Max Struess... Why is Gabe Vincent, why is Bam Adebayo, who's already struggling, taking shots in overtime over the guy who just had 38? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why that happened. There has to be a legit reason why that happened, but it just doesn't make much sense to me. And that leads me to my sad point that Jimmy Butler is wasting his career here with the Miami Heat. Made it to the finals in his first year. You would think the Heat would build off of that. All they did was ran it back with the same team, got swept in the first round because of that. They got swept in the first round. What does Pat Riley do? He brings in Kyle Lowry. He brings in uh, P.J. Tucker. Makes moves while the rest of the East didn't make many moves. What do they do? They get to Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals and lose it by one shot. What do the Heat do in that offseason? They lose P.J. Tucker, who was their starting power forward at the time. They re-sign Victor Oladipo. Uh, Yurtsevin has an injury to start the year. And guess what? We're back to that 2020, uh, 2021 year where the Miami Heat are struggling because they did not make moves in free agency. They did not make moves at the trade deadline like they should have. They did not capitalize on Jimmy Butler playing his best basketball of his career. The team playing at their peak, it just didn't work. I don't know what this draw office is doing. They did this before. They did this after the 2019 season. Where you made it to the finals, you didn't do anything at the trade deadline or offseason, and you got swept. They're doing the same thing. I don't understand what the front office doesn't get. So I guarantee you, we're getting, the Heat are going to get swept in the first round, even if they make the playoffs. If they make the playoffs, if they make it out of the play-in, they are going to end up getting bounced in the first round by either the Celtics, the Bucks, or the Sixers. It's just going to happen. Because they do not need to make moves. And I'm going to be honest, if Jimmy Butler requested a trade in this offseason... I don't think one Heat fan would be mad. I don't think a single Heat fan would be upset if Jimmy Butler requested a trade this offseason. Because, my God, this front office, this team has completely just failed Jimmy Butler. He has shown time and time again, he is good enough to be the best player on a possible championship team. If Yeah, he has actually shown it in the 2019 Finals. This man lost his second and third best player in Bam and Goran Dragic in that final series and still took him to six games. Still took that Lakers team to six games. And last year, he had no secondary scorer. Bam, Hero, and Lowry all did nada in that series, and he still was one shot away from making it to the NBA Finals. This man, Jimmy Butler, I, two things are going to happen this offseason. Jimmy Butler is going to leave. He's going to want out. Or the Miami Heat need to make a big trade. They need to get rid of Tyler Hero. They need to tell Bam to learn how to goddamn shoot or ship him out. They need to figure out what they're going to do with Kyle Lowry. They need to figure out what they're going to do with Old Depot. This team needs a major change in order to keep Jimmy Butler or to contend. If not, if they don't make a change next offseason, rebuild. Just blow the team up and build around Bam and Hero. 
Do not waste Jimmy's career anymore. He's already 33. He's play- He's in his prime. At the age 33, he is playing his best basketball ever. And it's being wasted here in Miami. But that's going to be it for me. Leave a like, guys, and enjoy. Subscribe if you guys are new. GG.